everybody's talking about the Bills drafting wide receiver, and there's a bunch of this is this is acclaimed as a deep wide receiver draft. Hmm. Everybody, if you had a ballpark it, yeah, seventy thirty of draft versus free agent uh, to address the position. To address the position, I think the Bills will draft a wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, but I just don't think it'll be in the first round. If you've seen the Sunday episode, I'll put it up here, the link. Rules of the game are simple. Paul and I play one round of rock, paper, scissors, and then whoever wins gets to pick whether or not they want free agency or the draft, okay? Oh, I'm excited about this one. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, you got me with the avalanche! You went rock, rock, rock! I did. I didn't think you had the balls to use the avalanche. (laughs) Free agency of the draft. Free agency for of the wide draft. receivers. Oh. This is the golden nugget. This is this take is so pick. huge. This is take so your huge. pick. I um will make things difficult on you. Okay. I will go with the draft. Okay. I can well, make you this point. The draft? Nope. I can make this. Did point. you want the draft? No. Nope. Tell me. Nope. I uh, I can make this point. This Let's hasn't go. been released yet. We could do this. <laughs> Since I went first. Yeah. In the um. In the Sunday episode, I think you can uh, you can go first this time. So you have free agent wide receivers. Free agent wide receivers. Yeah, this is a good time. Oh boy. I think there's a case to be made that the that being a McDermott value players who have experience in the NFL. And the reason why is you're asking a lot of a rookie wide receiver to come in and be effective in this offense. I agree. Robert Foster has been here for two years. And it has become less effective the longer he's spent here. We don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on with Foster. That he's, he's I mean, it's an enigma with him. That's a great word. Enigma. 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 Because you don't really know. I mean, we obviously, Paul. Well, we've said this many times on our shows, and it's not it's not any secret. We're not in with the team. No, I don't have any connections yeah. with the team. No, we are purely Bills fans. Yeah. that enjoy. Discussing what goes on with the team that exactly. you cheer for, right? Yeah, but what's going on with him? There's got to be some stuff behind the scenes that just we're not privy to, and that the media kind of keeps under wraps. Yeah, if and, they know it. Well, I but what Bill's drive is pretty good at keeping that stuff bottled up. Like they do a really good job of not letting people in. So even if there was problems, I don't really know if we would know it unless the player made it apparent. Yeah, and Robert Foster has been a good little soldier as far as that's concerned by keeping the mouth shut. He hasn't complained about playing time or anything like right, that. Right, exactly. Whatever, no. But it's just, okay, he can't get it, and he had an extra year with with Dable. Right. Okay, that throws up a little bit of a red flag. Um, John Brown said this is one of the most complex offenses he has tried to learn. Okay, I understand that. Mm-hmm. Beasley, you got a rookie in Knox. Yep. I mean, you got some talent around this team, but to bring that immediate talent and just have it go like this quick. Right. Well, in the free agency class is, I think, where the Bills might look to add another wide receiver because, again, because of the depth of the system, it's really tough to pick up. So you might want a player who's had to adjust to several systems. College players don't have to do that. They, there's a lot they have to learn. They have to learn how to be a professional. We, I think we underplay that a little bit, right? Like yeah. You have to learn. It's a different stage. Even though you go to Clemson or Alabama or Ohio State, you go from being a rock star – to being low man on the totem pole. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's just the truth. And, mm-hmm. and especially... Playing against men now. Right. right. Very different. Yes. Very different. I'm going to name you probably the top five wide receivers that are likely targets for the Bills. Mm-hmm. And they're, and I'm just bringing this up because I think it's important to bring it up. Number one, he's AJ Green. We t- you know, it's... I just say, I understand he's hey, broken down. I understand he's expensive. I understand he didn't play last year at all. There is a threat to him. The question is, how long of a commitment would you make to him? If the bill signed him for anything more than two years, it would be a mistake. Two years, seven mil each, I'm okay with that risk. Two years, 14 mil, I'm okay with that risk. Well, I really am. Just to sidestep really quick. You have a choice for a, a two year, two years and $14 million. Yeah. Do you give that to Hoyer or 
AJ Green. Oh, see, now we're getting tough. Yeah, see, I'd rather I, give it to Poyer. I'm just saying. It's yeah, I would but, too. But that's the yeah, that's the I'd risk you give, run. You're right. You're right. AJ Green, Emmanuel Sanders who came back from an Achilles injury and played great this year, but he's going to cost you a fortune. He's probably going to stay. He might stay in San Francisco. You said Sanders? Sanders, okay. Emmanuel Sanders. Right. But he's not a big guy. He's a slot guy. So that's what a lot of people got, are going to have that's, complaints about. Exactly. So I'm, I'm not saying Emmanuel Sanders is a fit for Buffalo, but he's one of the top free agents that will be out there. Amari Cooper is the other. You're going to pay a fortune for him. You You're are going to pay a $100 million for him. And I don't believe he's a $100 million player. I really don't. Mm-mm. Not in this offense. Mm-mm. You're not. You're getting a guy to be the second, you know, a one B scenario, because you want John Brown to be your number one, right? Yeah. You want John Brown to be your one A. You want wide receiver two to be your one B, and you want Cole Beasley to get, you know, a bunch of targets off of that attention. That's the that's the idea. Well, I mean, we talk about the, the comments by John Brown, uh, complex offense. He had 92 catches. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Yeah. And a quarterback that threw for 60% completion. Right. So if he gets a guy that should throw 65, he's, he's catching 118 balls. Right. Well, so how, how difficult was the system for him to pick up? You know what I mean? Sure. Right. Well, I mean, John Brown's bounced around a little bit. Right. He was in Arizona with the Arians. He was in. Um, he was up with Harbaugh in Baltimore for a season. That was a year off because Greg Roman was there. <laughs> they don't throw no wideouts there. Sure don't. But he obviously caught up on his reading because he didn't have any trouble picking up the bills. <laughs> so there's two other players, well, three other players that we could talk about. Robbie Anderson, stay within the division. But I've heard some off the field concerns with Robbie Anderson. Oh, I don't really yeah. think he's a character guy for them. The name that Bills fans are going to hear, I'm not really thinking he's. I think he's a character guy. So I don't. I don't think he's going to okay. fall in with Buffalo. Two other players that aren't going to be talked about as much that I think are very, very viable: Geronimo Allison, number one. Love Geronimo. He's big dude. But why do I like him? Oh, because he played with Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers Rodgers makes everyone better. Right. So the question becomes... for his own defense. (laughs) That's true. Can't can't make them better. No. Um, The question becomes, Geronimo Allison, is he enough of a slam dunk to be your wide receiver too? I mean, you're building a team of number twos then. I don't think John Brown's a true number one in in the NFL. I think John Brown is a very solid upper echelon tier one number two. The, the most size is always the differentiating factor in the NFL. It really is. I hate to break it to people. You talk about John Brown being a great number one wide receiver. The only reason he's the number one is because there's a guy with outsize on, on the Bills. There's nobody with size on the Bills. Yeah, but the, the system that they're running isn't predicated on having a true number I agree one, with which that. is why he's right. able to enjoy success. It's, right. It's basically on the route concepts and where yeah. he's supposed to be at certain in certain times. Sure. And that's fine. And he's he's the pri- he's not the number true number one. But he's an, he's the primary look. Right. On um, and then when he's taken out of the route, now you got to start having a quarterback that can progress through the system. Right. And that's fine. Here's here's my last one. Ready? Yeah. You're gonna not like this one because I'm I'm afraid of this one. No, don't do it. What? Who am I gonna say? Devin Funches. Devin Funches. I hate you. I passion. know. I don't want him. But he's a Car- from Carolina. Bean was absolutely in on drafting him. He's big. He is big. He, uh, I mean, he was actually mocked to be a tight end in the NFL draft. <laughs> they talked about him transitioning to tight end. But the reason I bring up Funches is because like. you're going to get him for a song. Missed the entire season. Did he? In Indy. Yeah, missed basically the entire season. Made like $10 million on a one-year deal. I know, right? So you're going to get him for a song because Indy made a huge mistake bringing him in. Okay, so that's a value value big guy you're gonna you're get him if you if you offer him two for ten you'll get him so the fact that he has familiarity being drafted by a by bean mm-hmm. well not well actually gettleman right but in bean carolina was there. yeah he was there uh mcdermott was there yep so the fact that he was drafted by them uh you think the familiarity and the fact that he's going to be cost effective yep okay i mean i can get behind those those two points because believe it or not a lot of businesses decisions in the NFL are made that way. Well, then let me ask you this. Or would you do uh, two years of A.J. Green or two years of Devin Funches? Oh, my God. Come on, man. No, I have to ask. What do you think? The, what's the answer? Two years of A.J. Green, two years of No, Devin, because Devin the cost Funches. is coming up right next after that. The cost of Green and it's Funches. Four, it's $4 million. It's $2 million a year. Two for 10, two for Would you two rather? I think the question is, do you want two years of Devin Funches or one year of A.J. Green because they're going to cost the same at that point. 
You're right. Yeah, you're right. They would. Just about. What would you do? What would you do? If you draft somebody... Here's One of AJ, because yeah. I think he's going to try to resurrect himself. I think that's an interesting point, because this leads into your draft. Right, yes. your draft sign. Yep. So if you sign a veteran free agent to play your number two wide receiver spot, right, and really lock in, it allows you the time to develop your wide receivers that you're going to draft late. If you're going to draft a wide receiver in the third round, the fourth round, Bean and McDermott have proven these guys are not starters. You earn your time starting. So it gives you time to develop that wide receiver. If you have somebody like A.J. Green or Devin Funches on a short deal, it gives you a year or two to get them ready to really contribute, right? So I think this is, this sounds to me like it could be an and situation. A hybrid? Right. I like it. But there's a lot of really good players available in the draft at the wide receiver position. See, that's the weird part. There were a lot of good wideouts last year. Yeah. And what did the Bills decide to do? They they took a run at Brown and Beasley, not knowing they were going to both. Right. They took a run at both of them and they got them yep. both. And then they... Before that, they got a CFL wideout. Yep. So is this right? There's two paths that Bean usually takes. The one path is he takes a guy, uh, he, he signs a guy in free agency to a cap friendly deal, and then sees he, he covers himself in case he can't draft that player. Otherwise, if he gets the guy, the other side of that is if he gets the guy early, that guy's going to play. Feliciano. Right. Well, I mean, Kevin Johnson, even, but that was oh well, yeah, was yeah, but but. but he got Feliciano early in the in the uh, free agency process, and they still drafted Cody Ford, who was projected to be a guard sure at that did. point. Right. So you're sitting there going, okay, well, he's got the two schools of thought. You can never have enough depth on the offensive line, all that stuff. Um, now, when I said I'll take the draft portion of this, I think that they will because I think Brown and Beasley only have two more years left on their deal. Right, they're three-year deals. They're three-year deals. So you got to get a guy in here that can – like you said, learn under these guys now. for two years. Now. now. Yeah, that's the whole of my theory. If you sign Funches or Green to two years, you're cycling that whole wide receiver group at the exact same time. That's the, that's the problem. Right. So uh, that's why you draft. Now, you technically, depending on how the CBA gets negotiated, you'll have Duke Williams for the rest of his life if you want him to. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's a guy who's, um, you know, he played in the playoff game, so we can't. That it seems like that part of the equation of the what if Duke Williams would have played this year, we right. still got him. What right. could you do? Blah blah blah. Um, Let's be clear: we have Duke Williams for the next two seasons on exclusive rights as a free agent. Yeah. So he's league minimum. The Bills want him. He's theirs. Yeah. That's it. Here's the two schools of thought: for the offense that you're running, you don't need a bona fide number one stuff. If you agree with that, if you have enough twos. You're good. Okay. Theoretically speaking. Okay. All right. And this, the way that this offense has been run in the past, you don't need a stud number one. Here's my point. Okay. The guys that are in the draft that are highly touted, with the exception of like two or three, like there's a lot of receivers in this draft. There are. Yeah. Uh, Chanel is like my give me up right now. Big, really? body guy, big body guy, not as highly touted as the other ones that went to the SEC schools and all those. Like, okay. you're talking about right. Judy Higgins, um, uh, Lamb, and all those guys. Colorado all those guys, Buffaloes. Ju- yeah. All those guys. Yeah, true. That's it. Colorado all, Buffaloes. All those guys over there, they remind me of stuff you already have. So if you go for that, if you go for like a Judy or a Lamb, you're getting a guy you already have. So okay. are you getting a... Are you, are you drafting John Brown's replacement two, for two years later so that he can go on and play two years by himself with all these number twos around? Or do you want a guy that's a big-body guy that you want to go, that'll go up and get the ball and look at Chanel? Mind you, I'm not saying guaranteed in the first round. We're not talking about first round. We're just talking about they'll draft these. Right. I hear what you're saying when you say the way this offense has been run. It's not successful. Well, and I... I don't want to say that this draft, they're going to continue to prepare themselves for four more years of Brian Daly. I think let's be realistic. They're not, no. They're not, right? So the odds of them going to get a big-bodied wide receiver in this draft, I think are more likely because there is a need for it on this team. Yes. There's a very big need for it on this team. And 
what, you're going to go outside for Rashad Perryman and be like, nailed it. We got our big guy. No, you're not. That's not going to be the only thing they do. This team, you're right, has proven that when they identify depth is needed at a position, they double down. They do. They do. They double down at the position. So you're, they're, you're saying they're going to trade for Mike Evans? No, no, no. <laughs> so if you were going to, okay, we're talking about, you're from theoretically, you've been, you've been talking about wide receivers. So you like Chenault a lot. I love Chanel. Okay. I think he fits the profile. I know there's a guy, there's like three or four guys I'm going to be missing because we haven't really dove heavy into our draft stuff that we're doing. Right. I mean, we really get into the film but and stuff I know. like that. But on the surface, you want to talk about guys that you could plug in and play right now. Those are the Judys. Those are the Higgins. Those are the those are the Jeffersons. Those are the Lambs. Those are all those guys. Right. You can plug them in right now. Okay. There's a steep learning curve here, but if you get it, your athleticism will be able to show in this offense. So right. if you went into a, into a three wide set and you want to put you want to put Lamb on the outside of Beasley, and you got Knox and Brown on the other side, that's going to be kind of hard to, to defend. Yeah. But you have McKenzie, who is that shifty little guy too. I don't see Roberts back on this team. Really? If they draft the no, you have McKen- like you double down. You got Ray Ray McLeod. Like I think you you could live without Andre Roberts. Well, I mean, he wasn't effective for you on offense. Anyway. Well, I mean, but I think he was a heck of a blocker. Sp- I agree, but it, I think it frees up a spot for you, right? To go sign a guy and draft a guy. You don't bring back Roberts. You have McKenzie and McLeod already. So it so gives the, you an opportunity. It gives your roster spot to play with. So they're going to do both. I think they very likely are going to do both. I think mm-hmm. they're going to sign somebody. I think they're going to draft somebody. Not unheard of. I mean, that seems like something that it seems very bean like yeah okay all right hey we're gonna go draft Devin Singletary but two days before the draft we're gonna sign TJ Hilton just make it sure just make it sure you don't know I think a lot of Bills fans have a lot of I have a bad taste in their mouth from DJ DK Metcalf going in the second round the last pick of the second round right but that's I mean wide receiver like DK Metcalf walked in and was playing right away the Bills would not let a second round player start for them with Russell Wilson let's be very clear here yeah. All right. Very and different scenario. Doug Baldwin retires. Everything else like falls apart. Wilson was 80% on offense anyway, so you're not asking Metcalf to do anything outside the box other than be huge and catch a few passes. Right. And run really fast. Yeah. Go ahead. Do this. Can but you I, can you open up the field so Russell can run behind you? Well, and I think this year, people, Bills fans, Bills Mafia specifically, I'm going to share a lot of people on Hashtag Nation, expect the Bills to draft a wide receiver very early. I'm not of that school because I look at Bean's propensity for value, and he's going to look and see, well, okay, I can get the fourth best wide receiver off the board, or I can get the second best tackle. Gee, let me think about this for a minute, right? I can get the the second, the third best linebacker off the board. I can get the second best corner off the board. Like I just, they're going to go by their board, right? What three? What, third three? round. Third round. That's the highest I'll go for a wideout. Uh, see, I'm okay in the second round. I really am. I'm okay in the second round. I'm not for the reasons that you just said. Really? So I think in the first round, that is your mentality. You either, oh, we're going to get the fifth best wide out or the second best tackle. All right, this is awesome. Hey, we already we already signed two free agent wide receivers. We're, right. we're good to kind of wait around. Mm-hmm. Okay. It goes, and then they end up finding a guy that's mm-hmm. nobody heard of. He's right. 6'5", 220, runs, right. a, runs a 4'6". Okay, he's not a burner, but he's a big dude. Uh, you put him opposite of Knox. Where did he come from again? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Bean and McDermott have a tie to that college. Southern Mississippi University. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about the greatest wide receivers in NFL history? I mean, Marshall, Mississippi Valley State, and Tennessee Chattanooga. People could say Owens, Moss, and Rice are the best wide receivers in history. And look at the three colleges they came right. from. So. Right. Well, I, I think the college game is changed significantly because it's such a it's a billion dollar industry. It's a factory. You look at Ohio State and Alabama and LSU; they they're just factories for football players. Well, they're, they're fact. I, I understand the factory for. If you want to gra- draft a guard from Wisconsin, I'm all for that any day of the week. What's the third position we're doing? Uh, 